Hello friends, today we're doing a video that I was not planning on doing, this was not in my video schedule, but we're going to be doing a one to two star tournament, or just one star tournament, it's catchier. <laughs> So a couple weeks ago, I did my five star tournament, which you guys seem to really enjoy. And I loved like picking together all of my five stars of the year in like a bracket formation and battling out to see what comes out on top. And today we're gonna see what comes out on bottom. <laughs> can't get any worse than what it is. Can it? It can't get any worse, we're at the bottom. I just enjoyed doing that video so much. It was so much fun. I love brackets. <laughs> Aren't they fun? So we're gonna be doing this. I've collated all my ones, twos, 2.5s, which I have exactly 16 when you make up all of those, which is kind of depressing when you think I have as many ones, twos, and 2.5s as I do fives and 4.5s. But that's, that's a question for another day. <laughs> I wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about it. But yeah, we're gonna put them together and see which one comes out worst. Now I think this is gonna be a little bit more interesting than the five star one because I think a two could win over a one as like pissing me off more. And I do just wanna say before we get into it, we're gonna get into it right now. But I wanna say, I will try and give you the synopses of these, but it's not gonna be good. We're getting like a one sentence synopsis of this because when I hate a book, it leaves my brain, it floats away in the wind. I don't remember it. I, I just, what, I have limited brain space. What's the point of holding on to something I don't like? So shall we just get into it and battle it out? Okay, battle number one is Five Survive by Holly Jackson versus The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. Wow, I really forgot that I read that this year. Okay, Five Survive, let's do synopses really quick. Come on, Megan. Five Survive is a group of friends who are stuck on an RV in like a hostage shooter situation for like six or eight hours or something. And it's written by Holly Jackson, who's the author of Good Girls Guide to Murder. But alas, I didn't love it like I love Good Girls Guide to Murder. We, I'm just pretending Five Survive doesn't exist, honestly. That is not part of the Holly Jackson discography, in my opinion. <laughs> and then The Cartographers is an interesting one. It's about like map making and about, I do not remember what is not a spoiler for this. And about a special map and magic maps. That's all I'm gonna say, because I really can't remember, it's not a spoiler. For me, the cartographers had some interesting ideas. I just felt like the execution wasn't great. There was more elements of the cartographers I enjoyed. Five Survive, granted it experience was, was probably hurt by me reading it overnight, set, like I read it all in the time, in real time. So it happens from like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I stayed up all night and pulled all night and read Five Survive. Probably didn't help, but my God, what, like that is the most egregious. It really upset me. Oh my God, five survive. Like I was so emotionally damaged. It didn't even cross my mind when I was like making this video and like getting ready to make it and getting ready to read it, that this could get less than a four star. It was not even a possibility. Like I was like, I'm gonna really enjoy this book. It's gonna be such a fun time reading it. We're gonna have a great video. We're gonna have a great book experience. Um, I, it, it gave two stars. It was so bad. The writing did not feel like Holly Jackson's writing. There were like weird plot points that went nowhere. It was like she'd like written stuff into an earlier draft and then gotten rid of like, say, three times it's mentioned, but left two times it's mentioned. Like an idea, a concept, part of a character's personality or a little clue that we see. Like there were little <laughs> hints of stuff throughout it that then no resolution, nothing happened. And I thought the whole reveal of like this active shooter and why they were targeting these teenagers and RV was rubbish. But I'm excited for her next one. I think her next one is gonna be more successful for me. Then we have Book of Night by Holly Black versus The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. Book of Night, God knows what that's about. Shadows, shadow, is that the one? Yeah, you have shadows. We have shadows that are a person. <laughs> I don't know. I really have no idea what you're on about. It's a ninth house ripoff. You've got a Galaxy Stern main character who's like edgy and she's like, comes from a dark world and she's trying to get out of it. Okay. And the murder game by Tom Hindle is like a country house, locked room murder mystery that I gave one star. But here's the thing. I gave the murder game one star because I was so disappointed and I think I have very, very high expectations for murder mysteries. I've read so fucking many that if you are just boring, characters with no development, stupid plot, stupid reveal, stupid clues, I'm gonna give you one star. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm not, <laughs> sorry. I'm a harsh critic when it comes to murder mysteries. 
I think, oh, but I gave, what did I give Book of Nights? This is where it's interesting. I'm tempted to put Book of Night forward, even though, oh, okay, I gave it 1.5. That's less than I thought. <laughs> No, okay, I'm gonna put forward Book of Night, even though I gave the murder game one star, because I think also you have to take into account Tom Hindle, it's only his second book, right? He could improve, right? He has a long career ahead of him, hopefully. Holly Black, yes, it was her adult debut, but Gurley has been writing very, very popular books for a long time. She knew better. She knew better than to publish that, because what was that? I have questions. <laughs> Good. Okay, then we have Confessions by Kane Minato and Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. So Confessions is a thriller where a tea I'm finding it so hard to remember what's not a spoiler for these books because I remember such disparate parts of them. Like such little parts of them remain in my brain. I don't remember I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't because I know for a long time ago. A teacher's daughter has been killed and in the first chapter she is confronting her class because she believes one of the classes killed her. I don't think that's a spoiler. And then the rest of the book we read from other people's perspectives involved in this. A lot of people love this. I was just really disappointed by it. I just didn't enjoy it at all. I think my main problem with this was we were reading the same conversations over and over again. No, we were reading the same story over and over again because we'd just go to a new perspective and they'd tell us the whole story from their perspective. And I just don't want to read that six times. I'm sorry. I was just not, I'm not interested. It was the same scene or like we'd hear, you'd have slightly different elements of the mystery because it's what they're involved in and they know about, but it was the same thing over and over again. One of Wicked Things by Francesca is a 1920s witchy, sapphic, kind of Great Gatsby retelling, maybe? <laughs> yes or no? No, yes. Maybe, sort of. This was one of my book club picks for my Patreon. Like, I remember on the live show, we just kept remembering parts of this book and be like, no, that was not a part of it. It turns out it was. The plot of this Oh girl, she's everywhere. It's a debut and I I don't want to dunk on debuts, but I guess I am going to <laughs> because it was just bad. Like the plot, I don't have to explain to you how many elements of stuff that was going on in this plot and the characters would just act in these stupid ways. And like, I think it kind of thought it was a Great Gatsby retelling, kind of like a lot of the characters mirror characters in The Great Gatsby and there's like the green light from across the lake and like, you know, there's a lot of comparisons, but then it kind of like halfway through switched. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's a very different tone. I'm gonna put forward Wild and Wicked Things because that was terrible. It was so bad. Then we have two books. These were actually in the same video. Um, Smoking 17 by Janet Ivanovich and Into the Water by Paula Hawkins were both in my reading the winners <laughs> of the good, <laughs> of the Goodreads Mysteries or Lot Awards. Into the Water, I cannot tell you a single thing about it. It's a small town, someone drowns. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember anything about that. In thought of sins that it was boring and forgettable, Smoking 17, this is like a mystery series that seems, I think it's got like 40, 30 books now, you know? And you're following a, a character, but like, there's no mystery. It's really just about a romance, well, two romances. She's like, has a boyfriend, but then she's cheating on him. I always knew there was some type of scandal. I felt it. Like, and I assume this happens in every fucking book. Like, I assume she sleeps with both these guys in every book. It's like a love triangle. But like, she is calling this guy her boyfriend, but then we're like, oh, we never talk about if we're seeing other people. I think he might be. And she goes and sleeps with another guy. I'm sorry. No. And it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Some people, I mean, I am hopping into this, like, 17 books into a series, but also it's the kind of series that you can do that. Uh, what was the mystery? Can't remember. <laughs> it, was it was like trying to be funny. It was not funny. I'm putting Smoking 17 forward. Oh, then we have two of my most controversial ones. We have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Zulin Dan and Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. Oh, <laughs> suddenly I can't see. Daughter of the Moon Goddess is about the Daughter of the Moon Goddess and it's a fantasy. And I was just really disappointed by this. I don't think this one's bad. Fourth Wing is bad. <laughs> I did a whole reading vlog for it. But I remember saying at the end of that, like I would read the second, the next one, Iron Flame or whatever. I could be convinced to read it for a video. Cause I, I yes, at that point I'd be like almost hate reading it, but there's a little reveal at the end of Fourth Wing that made me go, oh my God, 
I'm intrigued. But I hated Fourth Wing. It's boring. The writing's terrible. The world building's terrible. I mean, I don't... Go watch the video. I don't want to relive what I thought of that. I'm sorry. I don't want to remember what's going on there. A Daughter of the Moon Goddess, I wonder if I had read it at a different time or a different day, a different month, a different year, would I have had a different opinion? I still, I'm never unhauling it because it's one of the most beautiful books I own. Um, I'm putting Fourth Wing forward. I hate that more. I hate it more, but like there's Stockholm Syndrome with me in Fourth Wing. So I'm like, I would read Iron Flame. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. What is wrong with this girl? What is wrong with this girl? But it took me like three weeks to read it. I was reading nothing else in that time. It took me three weeks to read Fourth Wing. Then we have two that I really do not care about either of them one bit. <laughs> that is The Drowning Woman by Robin Harding and Wayward by, I don't even know, Amelia Hart, maybe? The Drowning Woman's a, a thriller. We're following a homeless woman who saves a drowning woman and it's about their lives intertwining. And uh, it was so boring. <laughs> so sorry. It was just, it was, Oh God, there was a lot of plot holes and I had issues with the um, the portrayal of abuse in this. I felt like it really played into thriller stereotypes rather than being like a really like careful and caring approach to abuse. And Wayward by whoever it was. <laughs> it's a story of witches oh, throughout history, but it's not witches. You promise me witches and you don't give me witches. The magic in this is m minuscule. The connection between these women, like they're, you know from the beginning they're related to one another. Minuscule, 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 minuscule. It just gave me nothing. Both of these books gave me nothing. They gave me nothing. They gave me no vibes, no entertainment. They gave me nothing. So I don't know which one to put forward. I think Wayward is more egregious because there's plenty of bad thrillers out there. But if you promise me witches, you gotta deliver. Oh, this next one is easy. Um, <laughs> Every Line of You might be the worst book I, uh, I've ever read. <laughs> no one's reading that book. It's a YA following an, a girl who creates an AI. I don't wanna spoil it for you. She creates an AI and it goes downhill from there. I think I spoil elements of it in my vlog that I did. I read it when I did Wrapped Up Rejects. The writing, ooh, the plot, ooh, like it's, bad very bad I don't even know how to sum this up to you it is some of the worst writing I've ever read it reminds me of like when I'd read a shitty book from the YA section when I was 13 in the library like I'd pick something up and it'd be awful it was that level and it's there's there's elements of this that are unchecked there's a character who does awful things the main character there is um a relationship that is extremely problematic there is <laughs> actions surrounding consent that are terrible that just go unchecked everything goes unchecked in this book so I don't believe it's a commentary for young kids about like don't do this <laughs> or like teens don't do this it just oh you don't even get me started The Dark Side of Lives Frankenstein by Kirsten White was a 2.5 its only sin was being boring uh it's a Frankenstein retelling from the perspective of Frankenstein's wife we're moving every line of you forward get out of here <laughs> And then this one's easy as well. So The Antique Hunter's Guide to Murder was extremely disappointing because I had such high expectations for this. We're following an antique, ex-antique hunter whose antique uh, mentor is murdered and she tries to solve his murder. And like that is buzzword upon buzzword upon buzzword for me. It was so boring. There's like five scenes in the whole book and it, the physical version that's gonna come out when it gets released is 380 pages. Excuse me, did I hear that right? 380 pages. And there's like five scenes in the book. But The Stranger Upstairs, I just read for Gabby's book club and I gave it one star. I've only just read it. I finished it like two days ago <laughs> and I gave it one star. It's about an influencer, but she's not an influencer. An influencer is just a buzzword to market this book who buys a haunted murder house and starts losing it, you know? And is the house haunted? What is going on? That I could not even go watch. I will link Gabby's live show down below. I cannot even begin to get into the problems about this right now. I can't even begin. It was just the writing. The writing was a problem. Everything about this annoyed me. I was literally ready to, I wasn't even reading the book. I was reading the audiobook on my phone. I was ready to throw my phone across the room. I'm finding you quite aggressive now, actually, to yeah. be honest. I just thought so much of it was so stupid. So, oh, let's do a kind of color matchy though. Okay, now we have to give synopses. We can just <laughs> eliminate further. Okie dokie, Five Survive versus Book of Night. Oh, I think Book of Night is a worse book. I think Book of Night is a worse book, but Five Survive hurt me more. I'm gonna put Five Survive forward. 
I gave that two stars and I gave Book of Night 1.5, but Five Survive hurt me deeply. Like, Holly Jackson is my girl. You don't understand how much it hurts me to speak like this. She is my girl. She is my girl. As good as Dead by Holly Jackson, I will defend to the grave. Anyone who doesn't like it, Ooh, I don't know what's wrong with you. I love the whole A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, but she really let me down with Five Survive. Um, next pairing, Wild and Wicked Things versus Smoking 17. I think I'm gonna go with Wild and Wicked Things because Smoking 17, to be fair to it, is like, I shouldn't judge it <laughs> on par with other books. Girl, the shade, the shade of it all. Because it's not trying to be that. It's a separate kind of thing. It's like a cozy, not cozy, like... I don't even know how to describe what this kind of concept is, but you, if you know, you know. Like, it's not trying to be an incredible novel, you know? It's, it knows it's a bit shit, I think. <laughs> so I don't feel, it doesn't feel fair putting that forward. And what are wicked things I gave one star? I mean, it's awful. The plot, that I, I, again, I've forgotten this, but that book club live show was one of the most fun ones I've ever done on the Patreon because we all hated it and we all kept realizing things. This is the year of realizing things. We all kept, <laughs> we all kept realizing things about this book and being like, what, what, <laughs> what is, what? Why is that happening? Fourth Wing versus Wayward. Fourth Wing is winning that one. Well, losing that one, I suppose. Because uh, the love for Fourth Wing, it is one of the most highly rated books on Goodreads. I don't get it. And you can't ask me to get it because I don't. And I will never get it. Like, why do you all love this so much? The romance doesn't really do it for me. The world building is terrible. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Then every line of you versus the stranger upstairs. I think it's got to go to every line of you. I think it's got to go to every line of you. That is, it's they're both terrible. These could be up there as like two of my worst of year. But um, every line of you, ugh, go go watch. I I don't want to spoil it again. I've already spoiled another video. So if you're intrigued, go watch the vlog it was in, which is the wrapped up rejects one. But I don't believe this should even be on the shelves. <laughs> Sorry. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. It's the truth. It's the truth. Okay, Five Survive versus Wild and Wicked Things. Again, I think Wild and Wicked Things is by far a worse book. Again, Five Survive hurt me more. Out of everything on this whole list, Five Survive was the most painful. Probably followed up then by Daughter of the Moon Goddess, because I had high hopes for that. Oh no, and Anity Hunter's Guide to Murder. Those were the three most painful. But out of those three, I think Five Survive is the worst book out of those three. But like, it comes a point, like, is it fair to just keep putting Five Survive forward? I don't know. I don't know. This one's tricky. This is way trickier than my, my five star tournament. Um. Uh. <laughs> I think I gotta go with Wild and Wicked Things. I think I gotta put that forward. It's not fair. It reaches a point where I, I have to be fair to Five Survive. It's not fair to keep putting it forward. It's not the worst. Well, it was a two star. But um, I just don't know how to sum up to you how bizarre Wild and Wicked Things is and how bad the character development is. And just, it was bad. Okay, Fourth Wing versus Every Line of You. Again, I think I've gotta put Every Line of You forward because like, again, it is a much worse book than Fourth Wing. There are redeeming elements to fourth wing enough for me to say i could put myself reading iron flame if you guys wanted a video you i would i'm not sure i would take no i don't want to say this this is really mean this author better never watch my video no one ever linked this to her if you are naomi gibson please click off this video right this second because what i'm about to say is not fair and i don't want you to see us i don't want you to see it but it's my truth i'm not sure how much money you would have to pay me to read another book by this author don't you go there. Don't, don't I want to go there. I'm going You're there. You're a monster. I'm Get out of my face. You are disgusting. You can't do that. You are disgusting. You can't talk to me emotionally. That is, that is my truth. Okay? That's my truth <laughs> that I am living with. Like, you'd have to, you'd have to give me some dollar. <laughs> I'm talking, would I do it for a million? <laughs> don't know. Like, it was... It was so bad, you know? So I think for that reason, I think every line of you is gonna win. Uh, well, it's gonna lose. It's gonna win the 
as my least favourite book of the year so far. Five Survive, Fourth Wing, you know, they made it far because they hurt me, but I can picture someone liking these maybe. Well, I have to because a lot of people do like them. I cannot understand why anyone would like this book. I'm so sorry. I don't, it's my truth. It's my truth. You don't want me to lie to you, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't want to say that. Someone spent time on this book. I don't want to say that, but it's my truth. Okay, everyone, that was my one to two star tournament, finding my worst book of the year. Again, this might change by the end of the year. We've still got time for me to read some awful ones. <laughs> so we'll see how the rest of this year goes. But this was kind of a mix of like, not just what I thought was the worst book because I gave the murder game a lower rating than Book of Night, but it's like, how egregious is this book, right? This isn't even like the, my worst book of the year necessarily. This is like, which one would I least recommend and which one am I most outraged by? Like, cause I get outraged reading a bad book. If you waste my time. And like, if you're an author that I've loved before, that ups the out, that gives an extra outrage point. If you're a book that's super hyped, that gives it another outrage point. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what some of the worst books you've read this year are. Let's all commiserate together. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.